And now we come to the inaugural address, Honorable Minister Shri Ravi Shankar Prasad, Honorable Minister for Electronics, IT, Communications, Law and Justice, to address us with his insights. Under his leadership, we are trying to achieve these objectives. Yeah. My distinguished Minister of State, Mitravar Sanjay Dotre, Secretary, Mr. Ajay Sani, Mr. Nandan Nilikani, Devjani Ghosh, Rajendra Vishek, all other friends, welcome. For me, it is a very nostalgic day when I recall the five year journey of Digital India. When we were launching it, a debate was occurring within us as to how to define it. I remember my officers coming with a technical explanation and a good explanation. Then I said, I thought to myself that when I see the digital ecosystem of India, in the service sector, we have made a great name for ourselves. Institution and individual both, from TCS to HCL, to Infosys, to Wipro, then from Mr. Narayan Murthy to Nandan Nelikari to Chandrasekhar to Mr. Shivnada to others. Digital India must capitalize on it, but Digital India must go beyond. And then I deliberately and very consciously decided that Digital India to succeed must become a mass movement. It must have the interest of ordinary Indians as stakeholders. And therefore, I deliberately formulated Digital India is designed to empower ordinary Indians with the power of technology, number one. Number two, bridging digital divide. And number three, most important, I have insisted, as Ajay said, I will continue to insist, digital inclusion. And the second thing I decided, this must be achieved through technology, which is homegrown, and also economical. And lastly, digital India must become a mass movement. We have to analyze the five-year journey on these three benchmarks, what we have achieved. Yes, ordinary people have a stake in this, as everyone has, has spoke about it. I do not repeat. Number two. It is empowering ordinary Indians. From mere 70, 80,000 CSC to this rising to close to 4 lakhs, with 12 lakh boys and girls working in it, and they becoming entrepreneurs in their own way, that they are selling Tripura pineapple all the way to Dubai, or Muzaffarpur lychee all the way to London and Germany. That's the entrepreneurship I wanted to create. And I'm very happy my department succeeded. The second thing we need to know, all the platform we created, be it Aadhaar, be it GSTM, be it Aishman Bharat, be it UBI payment, all have become milestone of success. Again, homegrown technology, Indian entrepreneurs, Indian intellectual uh, capacity, and proud Indian creators. And Mr. Nilekani, I need to compliment you for the way you led in many of these initiatives. I remember the Aadhaar story. We had to fight many battles. And ultimately, we succeeded. And the biggest thing of technology is that it leaves its own stamp by its performance. This has been a real journey. I don't want to give the numbers. All have spoken. I have all the numbers with me. But there is a reason to have a modest success 
freely. Whenever I go abroad, the very longestest conference in the Commonwealth, I had gone to Bahamas, I was speaking on law and also on technology, and all the ministers of Africa to other countries say, let us give Aadhaar, let us know about digital inclusion. Therefore, our story of inclusion today is a global buzzword, which I hear whether in Bahamas or in Argentina or in London or in Sri Lanka. That is good. The inclusive character of digital uh, activity is coming into sharper focus. Now the question arises, what next? That is a very important point. What next? In this COVID crisis, technology came to great help. I remember Devjani, the distinguished president of NASCOM, talked to me. We have to work from home. I liberalized all the rules. Today, 85% of work is happening from home. Ajay, Sani, and his team worked well to establish Arogya Setu, which, in spite of campaign to the contrary, is now being used by crores and crores of Indians, which I would say modestly successful. If anything need for improvement, we need to do it. But ultimately, these are technological products. In my communication department, geofencing of people who are in isolation, bulk messaging to COVID Saudan. Therefore, it is a matter of satisfaction that by insisting upon digital India, we could take up successfully the challenge of COVID and make the country go in. From digital payment to bank withdrawal, uh, Devyani talked about it. I would like to reply, reiterate that apart from my common service centers from telehealth to others, my poor postman did a great job. A 2,500 crore of money was delivered in villages where there is no ATM or there is no bank mitra. Only the digital fingerprint is there and the app is there. Therefore, now digital governance has come to the core of India's discourse. No one opposes this politically. Everyone is keen to adopt. That's the biggest success of digital India. I would recommend Mr. Nanda Nilikani, please explore the great height of healthcare, which is so com compelling in the wake of post COVID. Kindly come with new product, which I just rightly stated, of education. I'm very keen, those who can afford can always get good quality digital education. I have no problem with that. But what about the poor? What about the underprivileged? What about the marginalized? I feel very strongly for them. Can we create some kind of a good digital platform, a good stack, as we did in case of GSTN to Ayushman to UPI to Aadhaar? India is waiting for that. Second is education health I talked about. Agriculture, we have many success. But can we have a common platform whereby, like Jim, whether you use AI or new technology, I leave it to you, but it is a matter where public-private partnership can be of great help. At a click of a button, a farmer has all the facility at his disposal. Fertilizer availability, weather prediction, market availability, the systems need to talk to each other. There are too many segregated facilities available. So these three, health to education to agriculture, you need to apply AI, do it. You need to write, uh, uh, apply other pillars of technology, do so. But it should be the same product like UPI, like Ayushman, like GSTN, or like Aadhaar. That, I think, we all need to do it. That is indeed very important. 
I'm very happy with the success of electronic manufacturing, but mobile, not simple. We are very keen, it, we must become a big center of mobile and electronic manufacturing. In the wake of the ban which we have imposed, I don't want to go the details of it. An emergency power has been exercised and the legal process has been followed. But I think it's a great opportunity. Can we come with good apps made by Indians? If Indians can, and Devyani request to you, and to Mr. Nandal, Nilikani, you too, please encourage large number of startups, technological mind, young boys and girls, please make good apps. And they are quite capable of doing so. Let the dependence on these foreign apps with their own agenda for a variety of reasons must stop. I think there is tremendous intellectual uh, capability available in India, technological, imaginative faculty available in India to do so. There is encouragement, encouragement from our side to encourage, but they also need a helping hand from Devjan Yu, from Nilikani Yu, and many others. That, I think, is a big scope of public-private partnership, which we need to finalize in our own way. But I have not the slightest doubt that let us take this as an opportunity that India will become a big center of make Made in India apps in all the segmented requirements which we have. I think if we start thinking on those lines, and it is all doable. I set hard targets for myself, Mr. Nilkani. Thank you for the kind words from you and uh, Dejani. Good words. It will make me work harder. But I always set up hard tasks for me. But I set up only those hard tasks which are doable tasks. And all these tasks are doable. On the communication side, we are having a broadband mission. We are having a Bharat net. And very soon we are going to come with a concretized cabinet approval of uh, broadband through landline. India is the biggest center of landline still, but they are largely untapped. Therefore, I have decided to go to the cabinet soon with all the details so that there is a proper policy in place for providing broadband to the landline. And this will also allow cable operators to avail the facility to provide broadband in housing complexes. Other, uh, other areas of broadband availability is also in work. Therefore, these are some of the new opportunities. These are some of the new challenges. What is my last appeal? India has already left a mark globally as far as digital inclusion is concerned. Let us carry that journey forward. But Mr. Nilgani to you, Devjani to you, and all those who are listening to me, including my officers, should we take a vow on the fifth liberation of digital India that will make India a big center of software products too. We have already come with a proper software product policy. The digital India policy is there. The communication policy is there. The electronic manufacturing policy is there. And the whole software product policy we have created after wider consolidation. I think if you have that commitment, I have not the slightest doubt that India being a center of digital empowerment, of digital inclusion, of digital delivery of services, and most important, software products too. If that is the four corners we are able to achieve substantially, and I want to convey my gratefulness to the Honorable Prime Minister of India, Narendra Modi Ji, that the way he has given us full support is a powerful leader, with a powerful vision, the way he has guided us to achieve 
in many cases the impossible is going to become our beacon, our inspiration, and our commitment to work with new motivation. If we have these things in mind, these are the five years well deserved. Let us make the coming five years or four years, whatever it may be, the commitment to scale greater heights. And digital economy is extraordinary economy. Digital economy is very empowering economy. The way India's app economy is rising, I have been studying some detail in the last few days, is remarkable. Therefore, let us, and I have not the slightest doubt, ladies and gentlemen, that one trillion dollar digital economy is simply achievable. So let us take that commitment to scale that milestone. With these words, I congratulate my secretary, Mr. Sani, Abhishek, Rajendra, and all my team in the Ministry of Niti, from NIC to STPI to e-governance, uh, to all other institutions from NILET to others who have done so well in the field. And yes, when I talk of digital India, let me wear the hat as a long list or two. In the digital profile of Indian judiciary from judicial data grid, to translation, which Nandan talked about, simultaneous another area of growth. The last request of mine would be, Mr. Gilkeni, let us make this public-private partnership in language conversion a big movement. And a small, simple lady operating a CSC in a faraway Gram Panchayat in Bihar or UP or Telangana or Andhra Pradesh, when he or she will notice that all the literature which she is comfortable with is coming on her laptop or computer, I'm sure there will be a bigger smile on their faces. That's the India we all need to create. Thank you. Namaskar. Jai.